To start off, we have this nice linear gradient, which goes from zero to one. So this will be zero and this will be one as we can move from left to right. Now what happens when we use a color ramp? You can find a color ramp under converter color ramp. In fact, nothing has changed. And that's because it's set to linear and the value here is zero and the value here is one. Now we can also use something, some colors, right? So I've prepared another one here. And now as this value goes from zero to one, um, we pick the colors that are shown here. But what happens when I change this to two? So the values go from zero to two. This range is from zero to one, which was what we had before. But here is just picking the topmost color. And that's because um, the values should always be between zero and one. And Blender won't crash if it's between zero and one. But if it's less than zero, it will just make it zero. And if it's greater than one, it will just make it one. The most important thing about the color ramp are these color stops. You can move them around because they have a position which goes from zero to one, from uh, left to right, and then they have a value or a color. So let's give these two some colors, something like this. And as you can see, the result is just what we see here because these values are from zero to one. Once we move this around, um, what happens in the space left of this color ramp is there's like, you can imagine there's another color stop here with the same value as this one and the same for um, the rightmost one. There's also a color stop here with the same value as that one. Um, if you have multiple color wrap, color stops and you forgot to um, what values you wanted for them and now you're confused, you can remove them like this and you can also space them out with one of these two options. This repeat stops from left will make um, leave a space here, while distribute stops evenly will not leave a space there. Okay, if you set the color mode to RGB, which will do 95% of the time, then you get five options. So currently it's set to constant and um, these values remain the same or they remain constant and there will always be the leftmost color stop. So you can see the color here matches with this one. Um, you don't really use this that often, but you can use it. Um, I'll show some examples later for when you can use this. The next one is linear, which linear because it's lines. And um, if Blender will respond, then you can see that there are just lines in between the values of the color stops. But the problem is that you get these uh, sharp edges. Most of the time you don't care that much about the sharp edges, but in this case, would be better to use something like ease which makes sure that at the edges um, it rounds off nicely the only problem with ease is that it rounds off at the edges every time so like right here the linear did much better job at just making this almost like one line while here it tries to make it flat and then um, connect with the other part um, the smoother one than ease is cardinal and the reason this one is much smoother, as you can see this is doing a nice, you, bar you can barely notice this one is because it's also looking at the other one. So instead of just looking at these two, it's also looking at this one and this one. And the same goes for B-spline, but um, B-spline is even smoother because it doesn't try to reach these values. It can actually just over, go over or under them. So in this case, it's probably not reaching um, the value of this one, which would be 0 0.78. So yeah, those are the five interpolation modes for RGB. If you switch to use saturation value, you get different options and you get the same four options for use saturation lightness. So I'll just explain them for this one. The important thing to keep in mind here is just the color wheel. So the color here is sort of purplish, which is around here. And the other one is green. And now it's set to counterclockwise. Well, if we want to go counterclockwise, we have to go counterclockwise along the color wheel till we get to this value. We could also go clockwise. And in that case, we'll go around like this. Now, in this case, this one is further. So if we set it too far, we'll get the exact same result. Well, if we set it too near, um, we'll get the same result as if we had just chosen the counterclockwise mode. Let's look at a few examples of how you can use a color ramp. So I just have a bunch of planes here. 
So if we zoom right on into one plane, you can see that we have managed to isolate the borders of this Voronoi texture, which just looks like this by using a color ramp because we've moved this color stop all the way over here, effectively making everything greater than um, 0.112, just white, which results in this. And the reason we want to do it like this and not just set it to constant is because um, there are no real sharp edges like this in the real world. So we always want to keep a gradient um, depending on what output you, what you're using this output for. You can just set it to linear or maybe um, use one of the other modes if it needs to be smoother. In this case, um, for example, if you take the length output of just the object coordinates, and then take the fraction. We get this weird looking pattern right this, like this. And then if we plug it into a color ramp with the first and second output of the having the same color, and then use saturation value set to far, then we get this nice colorful output, which we can use um, to create some weird animations or a lollipop or something like this. See, this doesn't have to be the same color. We can also do something like this to reduce the amount of colors there are really is up to you, but then this one, um, you can see that they won't line up. If you want them to line up, you can use um, ping pong. Like that. Next, we have um, just normal noise texture, but then um, changing the interpolation mode here will give us uh, a different kind of noise texture, which might work better for some materials. Another simple example here is just using these colors to create um, some fake terrain data where we can imagine these are oceans or seas and lakes and then there's some hills and then at the top there are, the mountains get really high so there's no grass. Um, yeah, you can change these colors obviously. And then finally some nice ones, so if we imagine this is a particle system, then by using the object info random, which just gives us a random color for each one, we can um, get a nice color for each one. You don't have to just use this color, we can use this color as like an input for something else. And by changing these, we can adjust the amount of objects which will get this color. So now you can see the amount of color uh, objects with yellow is greatly reduced. Now there's a lot of yellow and if we added like too much color stops and we want them to be all equal we can just use distribute stops from left just like that.